Australia has two groups of Indigenous people, Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders. This video will explore the social and political culture and history of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. More than 21 million people live in Australia. Of these people, the government estimated in 2011 that there are approximately 670,000 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. More than 200,000 of these people live in New South Wales, almost 200,000 in Queensland, around 90,000 in Western Australia, approximately 70,000 in Northern Territory, 50,000 or so in Victoria, 40,000 in South Australia, 25,000 in Tasmania, and around 6,000 people in ACT. However, as you can see from the map, Aboriginal people can be found all over the country, in different groups. Aboriginal people have been in Australia for over 50,000 years. They were a hunter-gatherer people who had adapted well to the environment. There were approximately 300,000 Aboriginal people living in Australia when the British arrived in 1788. At this time, there were approximately 260 distinct language groups and 500 dialects. Different family groups would live a semi-nomadic lifestyle but would meet with other groups on occasion, for trade or ceremonial purposes. Aboriginal people built semi-permanent shelters. As a nomadic society, the emphasis was on relationships to family, rather than the development of land through farming. The physical environment of the land was created by spiritual ancestors who travelled across the land. Land boundaries are therefore defined by spiritual stories of the people. The way in which people are related to each other determines how they should treat one another in traditional Aboriginal culture. This also determines how people outside the group are treated. These relationships determine how food and gifts are divided, who is responsible for teaching whom, and who can marry whom. Each person has a role based on their gender. Men, for example, would be responsible for hunting, and women for bringing up young children. These relationships continue to play an important role in Aboriginal culture. In the 1700s, ships from Europe sailed around parts of Australia. In 1770, Captain James Cook, an Englishman, charted the East Coast. The first significant landing of Europeans in Australia happened in 1788, led by Captain Arthur Phillip with the so-called First Fleet, first at Botany Bay, then moving to Port Jackson. They claimed the land and expanded their territory as they spread. A second fleet arrived in 1790, and the process of British colonisation in Western Australia began in 1791. These early populations sometimes struggled to live from the land, despite the development of farming and trade with Aboriginal people. Tension grew as more and more of traditional Aboriginal land became occupied by Europeans. Aboriginal people were often devastated by diseases introduced by the Europeans, and sources of food were disrupted. In short, the traditional Aboriginal lifestyle became almost impossible for many people. Australia became a federation of states in 1901, when six British self-governing colonies agreed to unite and form the Commonwealth of Australia. Each state then proceeded to put in place legislation which oppressed the Aboriginal people. Aboriginal people were believed to be less than human, and legislation was used to control them and confine them away from the public. Children were allowed to be forcibly removed from their family groups. Aboriginal people and so-called half-caste children were under the protection of an official of the state. Aboriginal people could not enter cities and they could be forcibly moved from any place. This legislation was not repealed until 1967, by which time much damage had been done. Moreover, although the law changed, Aboriginal people continued to suffer from racism and remained significantly disadvantaged. One of the most traumatic effects of the legislation was that many Aboriginal children were removed from their parents and wider families. Many of these children were placed into missions or other institutions. Most Aboriginal communities were affected by this. 
Children who had one white parent were also removed so that they could become civilized. The number of Aboriginal children remo removed from their families has been estimated at 1 in 10. Jeff Sissons believes that the practice of removing Indigenous children from families and communities was not only driven by aim of assimilation, but also aimed to achieve the disintegration of Indigenous communities, to transform the relationship between Indigenous people and their environment. To many, the film Rabbit Proof Fence serves as a testimony to the stolen generations. The life of Aboriginal people in Australia today is shaped by the history of European settlement. Since the Europeans first landed in 1788, Aboriginal people were disadvantaged by legislation and racism. Whilst this is an experience that unites Aboriginal communities, it is important to remember that there are many different groups of Aboriginal people, each with its own traditions and customs. Therefore, there is no single Aboriginal culture or people. Aboriginal culture is diverse, and there are important differences between Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, as well as many differences within those groups.